is Jackie. Um, George and I have both been under the weather a little bit. I don't know why I can't look at this thing right. Okay. <laughs> and I just sound stopped up, but George has laryngitis. Y'all remember when that happened before? So I'm going to um, be with him. He's here. We're going to do some stuff with Blue 5 today. So um, hang in there with us, and we're going to figure out exactly. There he is. He can't talk. It's really unusual. Or, so oh. I'm going to um, be with him. He's here. We're going to do some stuff with Blue 5 -O today. So um, hang in there with us, and we're going to figure out exactly. There he is. He can't talk. It's really unusual. Or, so oh. I'm going to. I'm just going to turn that off because I think it started playing. <laughs> hey, everybody. <laughs> You can tell that I have never done this before, but we're going to go for it. So, uh, first, I told George that I think a lot of people don't know exactly what Blue 5 is. So, we were just going to go over a few of the things about Blue 5 some specs, and um, let y'all know. So, we're going to go ahead and get started with, um, I don't even know how to turn this thing. Oh, here we go. I'm going to turn this around. <laughs> You're his right hand. Yes, for a long time. For over 40, I don't know, almost 50 years, I think. But um, here we go. We're going to do Tech Talk Tuesday, number 187. And we're just going to kind of wing it today, like I said, and um, talk about Blue 5 and what George found when he tore the engine apart after um, running on the dyno for a lot of runs and then the real dyno we call is the 1320 going to the drag strip i think he went over that with y'all um last week but just to summarize he went a 990 um, in the quarter mile he still was a little bit nervous about leaving too hard off of the line so um he as he called it chicken winged it and didn't leave really hard but he did go a 990 at 139 34 so as you can see, he's torn it apart. Um, one thing that we do believe in, and when we um, built a lot of engines for people, uh, the shop, we like to tear things down to see what um, everything looks like after making all these hard runs, especially um, on a combination that we really haven't done before. Right. So if y'all remember, um, this is a 4.60 piston which there's some videos where he shows how close the pistons come together when they go down um, on the, in the cylinder. So it's really important to double check that and make sure that all that is set up correctly, as well as the clearance, the home job, the rings, all those things when we uh, take the cylinders off. Um, it does have the moonshine billet uh, cylinders with the ductile iron sleeves. Some people have asked about that. So um, we checked all that out. It looked great. I'll walk over there in just a second and um, be able to show you a little bit closer up. I just wanted to go over a few of the things before I went over there. Um, George is going to show us inside the primary too um, and the clutch setup. So he's working on that now. Um, it has a star 615 full race cam. That's the camshaft that George designed to work with um, these big, big cubic inch uh, engines and uh, turning a lot of RPM. I think for a lot of um, Harley people, they are scared over 8,000 RPM, but um, <clears throat> George likes to turn them up. So that's how we designed that. Um, it does have a 70 millimeter HPI throttle body. Um, they do a great job with their throttle bodies and he put 8.2 injectors in it. I know if y'all remember correctly when he was trying to get a tune in it and we really didn't know exactly what was um, it was gonna need, he went ahead and put 8.2 injectors in it. Um, and it has um, the uh, billet aluminum intake manifold. I'll walk over there in a minute and show y'all all those pieces. I just wanted to make sure that I had my numbers correct looking at this piece of paper. Um, the cylinder heads are uh, Frankenstein cylinders.
cylinder heads with four um, millimeter over titanium intakes and three millimeter over titanium exhaust. So I'll show you that also. And one other thing that someone asked about, it does have O-rings on the exhaust ports and those work out great to make sure that you keep the exhaust in the pipe and it doesn't go out everywhere. So um, that's one question I remember seeing people ask. Um, we used our uh, 640 spring kit with the titanium retainers and um, he hasn't taken the heads apart yet, but everything looks great on those after all those hard runs. So now I'm going to go over here and show you what he's got going on on the clutch. So if y'all don't have one of these little jacks, they're really cool to have um, the, to be able to uh, lift up the, the motorcycle. And um, anyway, while he's about finished taking the primary cover off um he he went ahead and decided to go with all stock uh clutch components except for the star racing billet compensator ramp cam some it's got several names but we just call it a comp for sure for short but if you do not have one in your ma you need one no matter what even if you just ride it on the street we have seen so many pictures and people sending us um, information that, um, you know, they have broken theirs. It breaks in almost three, like three pieces, equal pieces. Um, it's just too brittle. And so um, we work with Liberty Gears, Liberty's Gears in Detroit, and he specced it all out and it has worked great. And we sell them to a lot of Harley dealers just to put in bikes that come through their shop as a little bit of extra insurance to um, make sure that they don't have a customer totally tear up their clutch when that um, compensator breaks. So that's a little plug for those, but I think everybody can tell you that it is something that you really need to have in any M8 that you have. So George has got all the um, bolts loose, um, the oil looks great. I don't see any chunks, George. <laughs> and um, and uh, we let that drain out just a little bit so it doesn't make a big giant mess when you uh, first take the primary cover off. One thing you I have do. a hard time thinking about use, calling it a primary cover instead of a clutch cover from working on so many metric motorcycles. But do you want me to show them the heads while you're yeah. letting finish that? Okay, yeah. so I'll go over here and show you the cylinder heads. You can see that the exhaust ports look nice and dry. That's the O-ring I was telling you about. There is a little bit of leak right here, but we'll um, look at that. But these are the uh, four over intakes and three over exhaust. You can see it's nice and clean in the combustion chamber. Here's the other head, the other um, exhaust port. It's just got a little bit right here that we'll look at. But as you can see, um, after all that dynoing and going to the track and running on the track, the uh, heads look good. Um, there's the manifold that I was telling you about with the, um, the billet uh, aluminum manifold. There's the throttle body, 70 millimeter HPI. Um, okay, he says he's ready for us to look at the uh, clutch now. I'll try not to move too fast. Sorry if I did. So here is the star billet compensator ramp. Remember, it's metal on metal, so there's going to be some metal scuffing, I guess you would call it, but they are really, really tough, and um, they will not break like the stock ones. So as you can see, he ran uh, a completely stock clutch. Um, you know, he, he tries to use whatever stock parts we know will work without spending a bunch of money on aftermarket things that you don't need to replace. Um, one of the things that we try to always help people with is, you know, use your money where it's best for horsepower. Um, if, of course, if it's for reliability, that's great too, but use your money um, to make more horsepower. So I think there's a lot of shops that, you know, I always suggest a lot of 
individual parts and different things that you really don't have to have. So um, there's the clutch set up. Um, I don't know what he really wants me to say other than it's all stock. Yeah. Um, and like I said, there's the billet compensator ramp. You can see all the tensioners are all stock, all held up very well after lots of launches. I think he actually made about five or six runs down the track and lots of um, dyno runs. So, all right, I'm gonna go around over here so I can show you all the cylinders and pistons if George is gonna take something else apart on that. Okay, here are the cylinders. They look really, really good. Um, there's the billet aluminum cylinders with the ductile iron sleeves. Um, all honing looks good. The rings look really good. Can we turn that that way? Okay, there we go. So y'all can see in the cylinder, all that looks good. You can even see, still see the hone marks. Yeah after all those runs. So that is that on the billet cylinders. And then um, he's gonna hold up the heads where we can see a little bit better in the uh, exhaust port, how dry it is. The tuning looks pretty close with the color of the uh, valves and also the intake ports. There's the springs and the retainers that we, um, Joe Hornick designed the um, valve springs with uh, their PSI springs. Remember when you use titanium valves, you need to use a lash cap. We have had several people did not realize that and that's very sad because guess what? You have to replace your valves. So if you've got titanium valves, make sure that you use lash caps. That's on cars too. So just in case they aren't hardened on the tip. Um, here are the pistons, nice and clean. Turned out really nice. Nice total seal rings, did their job. Kept the oil down below. Let there be a lot of nice compression held in there and the burn looks really good. You don't wanna have um, a lot of oil in your chamber. I guess y'all know that. <laughs> um, so make sure that you have good rings and a good hone job on your cylinders to hold all that. Um, some people have asked us about using the lifter cuffs. Um, when you use um, a high lift cam, you need to use these lifter cuffs. We use SNS. Um, they're not a whole lot of money, but you have to have them to be able to hold the lifters in place when you have a high lift cam. That's all right. So the other thing that George used was a all stock transmission. And a lot of people are like, I can't believe that. You know, why did you do that? Well, it works. It's good. It's, um, we, you know, this bike was a police motorcycle. I didn't want to tell y'all that at the beginning, forgot. A 2020 M8 uh, police edition that was in use, in service, um, in a police department down uh, in the south. I guess we're really not supposed to say where it came from. But anyway, um, it was used in the rain every day, um, you know, a, a regular police bike. So it had, um, I don't remember how many miles it had on it, 20,000 miles, I think. And then they rotate them out of service. But this is the um, decal that he designed to put on the, uh, on the side cover. It's a 145 cubic inches, so that's where that came from. And Blue 50, we did a little survey with some of our law enforcement friends and um, tried to be respectful at the same time, have the um, terminology that they use. So that's why we went with Blue 50. And um, it's been a lot of fun turning this back into a race bike that was just a regular police motorcycle. Um, people have asked us about swing arm, strike dynamics. Um, we put a small uh, Busa rotor um, on it, and this is a, a high Busa rear wheel, just to have a lighter wheel. Those are stock shocks. Didn't do anything with those. Um, and then, of course, it has to use a high Busa rear sprocket, and we used an EK chain 
So a lot of people asked about the chain. There it is. Um, a 25 uh, front sprocket and a 54 rear sprocket. Um, depending on what your application is, George likes to run quarter mile and um, get all the gears he can. So um, that's the combination that he came up with. Um, as you can see, the oil looks really good. Um, we use um, Schaefer's oil or high performance lubricants oil. Oil, a lot of, we get a lot of questions about oil. But if you use a good lubricant, I mean, George is laughing because we do. We get so many questions. A 2050 in street bikes because um, you need to have good lubrication in these engines, especially at startups. So um, that's that on that. Um, I'm not sure where we're going to go next before he takes this bike to Shadyside for the big cash days race um, at the end of... April. <laughs> I should have had the date handy, but I don't have it right here. But they're having the, a big uh, cash days race at Shadyside with several classes. So that's where um, we'll be taking this bike next. We do have a, another um, project um, in the works um, to build a, the Outlaw Pro Comp, whatever, the class where anything goes. And we're starting on that now. He also showed y'all that he um ran the 2023 icon series el diablo street low rider no <laughs> i almost got it right um but anyway it's the ones with the small bags it's a uh a, a street low rider okay he can barely talk so be so the other thing he wanted to show you is we do use a stock oil um, plate and pump. Now, before um, they got it all figured out, they did have a lot of problems with that. George has a whole video that he did about the sumping problem and why it did it and what happens. But as you can see, the oil looks really good. Um, which is a good indication of how the engine is. So um, the, the newer bikes, the stock pump and plate are fine, good, no problem. Um, he wanted me to make sure I showed you all that because that is a big question we get. The other thing on this motorcycle, um, it has a stock crankshaft and stock rods. Um, it went to um, GRC, uh, Stanley Gardner up in Maine to get um, trued and welded. Um, and But we stayed with the stock crank and rods. Uh, a lot of people like to go all out on a crankshaft, and that's fine. I mean, if that's what you want to do, there's nothing wrong with that. But the stock uh, camp, crank um, has worked out well for us. Yes, these um, pistons have top gas ports. Um, we have always believed in gas ports um, to be able to help get good ring seal. George has done several Tech Talk Tuesdays about how important ring seal is. I mean, so super, super important. Um, he went to the engine technology um, expo uh, over in Johnson City, Tennessee, a few weeks back, and um, he... Um, talked about engine seal, uh, ring seal and the people from Total Seal were there and Rottler and it's just so important to make sure that you have good ring seal. Um, let's see. What's, what what's, else? What I did, uh, ring seal was the um, uh, on the ring seal. Yeah. Yeah, I mean it's it's so important to yeah. have really really good ring seal. Yeah. So is there anything else that y'all want to see on the engine? Um, people, somebody asked about um, how I know what I know. <laughs> um, <laughs> I um, 
have always been interested in mechanical things. My parents say even when I was younger and um, George and I started going to the drag strip when um, I was 15 and he was um, almost 18 and no, he was 18 and we just learned together. I literally stood there with a climber's manual and read what he needed to do uh, to take the engine apart. Mm -hmm. So <laughs> um, I just kind of learned along with him. Um, I worked at Star Racing with him alongside him for um, 43 years. I had a couple of breaks in between going back to teaching. I love teaching. I kind of feel like this is teaching also. Um, so that's kind of how all that happened. Um, just because I'm interested in it and I like it and I wanted to be able to help our customers on the phone um, when we did all customer stuff to interject in that. We have a lot of questions on that. We do not build engines for people anymore or motorcycles, but we sell an awesome product line of camshafts and spring kits and the billet compensators. So um, that keeps us busy. We thought we were going to be retired when we moved to Tennessee. Um, so um, this is kind of like what we do for fun. So um, <laughs> I guess it's, it's still something that we both are really, really interested in and want to share with people and provide good products for people that are proven. So um, there was something else you wanted me to show them. Um, there, no, there was a question that somebody had. Oh, the ignition. Yeah. Um, it, we use a, um, a, stock. a stock, a stock ignition with a um, power, no, a techno research. Yeah. I got it mixed up with other bike. A techno research um, tune uh, that uh, was done at Moonshine. George hung out with them for... <laughs> Probably they were ready to run him off, but um, <laughs> they got it tuned up and um, uh, just there's several things that George has talked about on his um, other tech talks on what you look for when you dyno. The air fuel ratio is so important that a lot of people overlook how important that is. So make sure that you have a, uh, your tech, your dyno guy has a really good understanding of how important air fuel ratio is and has his setup on his dyno to be able to get a front and rear uh, reading on the air fuel. Yeah. So, um, some fresh gaskets and some oil and then on to 9.5, Ben says, George. So, <laughs> um, he's got a, a lot of um, ideas. Um, it, I think the... Um, this is just gonna go back together. Like Ben just said, fresh gaskets, go back over everything, make sure it all looks good. Um, somebody asked about the gasoline that we use at the drag strip is um, VP C45, is that what we use? Is C45. Um, of course, on something like this, when you have piston domes that look like this, if y'all can see that, um, you. That's another important thing when you dyno, you have to look to make sure that you aren't having a problem with detonation. That kills a lot of things. Detonation is bad. Um, so that's the other thing that um, you need to make sure that you run good gasoline on any kind of build, even on a street bike. Uh, make sure you're not having a detonation problem. Yep. And, uh, He's gonna try to talk. No. No. Good oil. Good oil. Good good. oil. Yeah. Anyway, it's good fun. He's um, ready to put it back together. Um, I will post that date. Um, I know it's in Shadyside Drag Strip in Shelby, North Carolina, and it's called Cash Days. Um, uh, Mike Beelan at A1 put it together. It's a really neat uh, race with a lot of classes and a lot of good money up for grabs. So um, y'all look that up. That's where the next uh, place will be that he will be running this bike. And in between, we may go and run the other bike and um, see what else we need to do on it. But um, any other questions? Um, hey, I did pretty good. I talked nonstop for 25 minutes, which being a teacher, that's not that hard. But um, I tried to give y'all as much information as I could. Any other questions that y'all may have? Um, 
Thank you. Chili Willie said you did awesome, Jackie. Thank you, Rodney. Thank you, aggressed, aggravated, progressive, and Doug, and Vogel, and Jeff. Let's see, two over valves on that head will do 440 cam, so four over. Yes, um, uh, I don't know on the CFM on the heads. Um, we just kind of, okay, uh, Chuck, thank you. It's the 28th and 29th of April um, to be able to, if you want to make a little trip to North Carolina, lots and lots of um, motorcycles. Thank you, Bob. Um, hopefully, y'all learned something. I pointed out some stuff that... You can, you can uh, maybe apply. Oh, the pipe. Last, last thing. People asked about the pipe. Um, here is um, one of the head pipes. Um, it starts out as a um, two and, a, and an eighth, then goes to a two and a quarter, and then goes to two and three eighths. This is something that George got Burns to make. It's not like on the shelf, um, <laughs> but that's what the design he came up with, and it has a very short collector. I don't know where the pipe is. Where is it? Oh, right here. Um, everybody said, "Why did you make that so short?" I don't. He didn't. He doesn't know. He just decided that's what he wanted to do. So, there's the uh, the megaphone and the two into one collector. Um, but like I said, you can't call Burns and get it because George just made up what he wanted to have. So, um, any other questions? Got a, a few minutes. Um, I'll zoom back in on this so y'all can see that. Um, there's the pistons again. Nothing is secret. Um, we'll share with everybody because that's what... A season of our life we're in. We're sharing information that we've learned after doing this for almost 50 years. Um, there's the cylinders again. There are the cylinder heads. And the intake manifold and the throttle body. So if um, I think that's it. Oh, how much does the bike weigh, George? He can, 700 pounds, um, 900 with the rider. So 700 is what um, he got it down to. Um, I'm sure if you haven't seen it, you can find a picture where it's pretty stripped down. Um, that's what was so cool um, about the um, police bike. It did have some things that we could take off. Well, a lot <laughs> that we could take off. So anyway, that's it. Thank y'all very much for tuning in to Jackie's version of uh, Tech Talk Tuesday. Um, hopefully, George and I will both be back 100%. I do want to apologize to anybody that asked um, questions or needed to know something. We were both kind of um, down and out for a couple of days, but <clears throat> we try to get back to people as quickly as we as we can. So. That's it, y'all. Thank you very much. Tech Talk Tuesday, 187 is in the books. God bless everyone. Take care of each other.